one thing about pineapple is that the pineapple is actually uh, it's not a fruit right it's a conglomerate of fruits you can see that each each of these little nodules is a flower forget about sustainability you want to enrich ecosystems every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance keep it pruned we are cultivating abundance not a problem to cut down trees the problem is not planting them what is up youtube welcome to the agroforestry academy channel today i'm going to give you an update on my pineapple system uh, as they're beginning to set fruit check it out i've got a nice pineapple harvest coming up and before i get right into it smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell if you haven't yet remember we're releasing our videos every saturday and let's talk a bit about pineapple so i've got this system there you go with the main crops of pineapples bananas for the short term and then sugar apple and cashew for the long term um it's between 14 12 and 14 months old so the pineapples have begun to set flower that's the the usual time for them to begin setting flowers and what i did is i recently managed the system i just pruned back all the pigeon peas the trees and everything and this caused a shift in the amount of sunlight that hit the pineapple and this is a trigger for it to set flower so i've got right now about one sixth of my pineapples setting flowers i've got i planted three three thousand plants and i've got about 500 already on flower and more are coming every day so i suspect that in a couple of months they're going to be all flowering let's take a look so check it out all the little flowers coming up some of them are already well developed one thing about pineapple is that the pineapple is actually uh, it's not a fruit right it's a conglomerate of fruits you can see that each each of these little nodules is a flower and theoretically each of them produce a fruit it's um what we call an infrutescence in portuguese i don't know if in english it's the same thing but look they're all around a bunch of pineapples coming through and you can see i've got my rows of trees spaced every five meters here or it's actually six meters and i've got four rows of pineapples in between as you can see this is a per the perfect environment for the pineapple and then in the middle i've got some pigeon pea another some cassava and also, I planted sorghum and, and corn in the beginning. So in the beginning, there was a bit more shade but when the pineapple was younger. But, you know, when it reaches four and five months of age, you really want to clean up a bit. Although it is a low strata plant, um, you can't have it overshaded. So it's good to have like the rows of trees spaced apart and then the pineapples in the middle with some trees sprinkled, you know, spread out in the middle and some pigeon pea. You know some medium layer plant to to be right above the pineapple but you need to be constantly pruning that you cannot allow the pineapple to be overshaded all the time you want it to have this filtered sunlight coming in the beauty, beautiful thing about the pineapple is that it withstands drought very well and i'm in a very dry region although this year has been pretty abundant in rainfall um we've had a, we've already had about a thousand millimeters of rain which is pretty decent it's been well spread it wasn't concentrated only in a few months you know we had constant rain for about six to seven months and this has been good because i haven't had to irrigate at all 
And yeah, check out all those fruits. Man. It's beautiful. I just love pineapple. And my plan for this plot, because also I have the bananas, is to I'm going to dehydrate the pineapples in order to increase um, its value, its market value, and also to increase its shelf life. I don't really want to be uh, working with with fresh fruit because that's uh, that's kind of a, a logistics problem for me because then I'd have to be you know on the market every week and that's not the plan I have you know often I have to travel to do consulting services elsewhere and I can't develop this this lifestyle where I have to be on the market every year I'm starting to have some banana bunches as well and here's an old cashew tree that was already here it was pruned it was radically pruned now it's it's developing a pretty nice canopy you can see it's got some bright red new leaves and this is going to be the high shred of, of my of my system There's some passion fruit also going around and in most of the plots, I have the prickly pear here, along with the pineapple. You can see I planted the prickly pear in between each pineapple slit. There is a prickly pear. I didn't have at the time enough prickly pear uh, planting material, so some of the places do not have the prickly pear. As you can see in this place here, there's no prickly pear. And I'm going to come in and add the prickly pear later on because I want to have prickly pear all around. The prickly pear is my guarantee of photosynthesis and organic matter production throughout the year, regardless of the rainfall, because I know that I will face years where I will have like 400 millimeters of rainfall, 600 millimeters of rainfall concentrated in a few months, and then I'm gonna have drought for all the rest of the month. So I'm really, I really need to ensure myself against this sort of things now do realize that you know i've just come across as a strip of a strip with lots of pineapples um in flower and then there are some which do not have flower and whereas people will often use um some substances to induce the pineapple to flower all at the same time and this sometimes is very useful for the logistics of, of selling. In my case, I really don't want that because since I'm doing, I'm going to be dehydrating the pineapples. I actually want them to come in installments and not all of them at the same time because that reduces the size of the dehydrator I need. I'm buying a dehydrator that, that I can only dehydrate 20 kilos of pineapple at a time between 20 to 25. And, you know, it takes between 10 and 24 hours to dehydrate fruit. So I can only do so much at a day. And so I really want the pineapples to come in installments. So it's good for me that they do not come all at the same time. Of course, if you're selling pineapples in bulk, you know, if you're selling like a tons of pineapple at once, you probably want to induce the flowering in order to get all of the harvest at once. And once this pineapple has been harvested, I'm gonna harvest the banana, and depending on the development of my prickly pear and the cashew, which hasn't been great yet, I actually lost many of the seeds, they just didn't sprout, especially the prickly pear, which is, uh, which is a bummer. I'm probably gonna come in with seedlings to, you know, to get a proper population of prickly pear, but this will probably give me enough time to do another pineapple harvest. So there's the system of the pineapple. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna harvest this pineapple throughout the next six months. And, and also I'm gonna be harvesting the first bunches of banana and then I'm gonna bring them all down. Okay, I'm gonna bring them all down, all the bananas, and then I can replant the pineapples in the same spot and do another cycle of pineapples and then at that moment, I'm going to reinsert my future f 
fruit plants, which are the cashew and the prickly and the sugar apple, in wherever they're missing. Because like I told you, some of them just did not sprout. So if the system was perfect and the prickly the I'm always confusing prickly pear and sugar apple, and the sugar apple had established itself well, I would probably not do another cycle of pineapples because then the sugar apple would already be almost ready to set fruit because prickly pear sugar apple will set fruit uh, in about two years. So, you know, I'm going to be harvesting this pineapple after one and a half to two years of, of system and then the sugar apple would already be, be producing fruit. So that's what I plan on doing. Um, you know, two cycles of pineapple. There's some plantain setting fruit here as well. Yep. These bunches are not going to be great because these, uh, there's another one right there. Check it out. Where is it? Right here. This one will be a nice bunch of plantain. Um, all right. So the bananas and the plantains, they're not producing 100% um, of their potential because we had some severe drought in the beginning of the system and I didn't have enough water to irrigate sufficiently. So they are lagging a bit behind, but I expect the second production to be even better so that's why i'm not going to have any problem if needed to take down some of the bananas and plantains before they produce especially the weaker ones you know like this one it's a bit thinner it's not so great you know this is a one year old it should already be pretty big with at least 12 leaves and and releasing a nice bunch but it's not so i'm gonna have no problem putting it down you know feeding my pineapple with the stems and, and allowing for a strong new pup to come through. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna take too long in this video. This is just to show you uh, the update. Let me give you a bit of a side here um, because this is a, this specifically this plot here was a plot that I, I showed you during a pruning in the video that I'm putting a card here so that you can watch it if you haven't yet. You can see that the pineapples just look great. All the pigeon pea that I pruned, they're re-sprouting pretty nicely. You know, check it out. You can see where I cut the, the stem. They already have pretty long new branches. They're setting flower. And at this point, whereas I, I, I would usually not allow pigeon pea to set flower, right now it's a moment that it's all right because, you know, my pineapple setting, it's already setting fruit as well. Um, and they can all set fruit together and I'm gonna harvest some pigeon pea seeds in order to to be able to plant some more. But you can see that this this is the perfect perfect environment for pineapple, all right? You know a bit of shade, not too much. The pineapple is the, is the, the understory. You've got you know pigeon pea on top, you've got bananas on top, and you've got all these trees on top. And also, let me show you the the tree that I pruned in a couple of weeks ago. It's already re-sprouting. You can see there's some new reddish leaves. So that's pretty nice. You know, this has been like three weeks ago or so, maybe four weeks ago. So it's pretty nice. Uh, anyway, that's it. Make sure you you keep in tune because I'm definitely going to be posting some some news uh, during the pineapple harvest, and I'm going to you know produce some videos in the future about the dehydration process and and all that. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, make sure you check out our online agroforestry course. If you haven't yet, we've got a full 25 lessons agroforestry course for free here in our youtube channel just go to our playlists and you see five modules each module has a few classes a few lessons and you can go through them and really get acquainted with everything that we talk about here you know stratification pruning succession of species all of it companion planting 
And if you want to take a step further, and uh, you can join us at our Patreon community. By joining it, you will get access to some extra material that we're always posting for our patrons. You know, like sketches of our of our systems, and you know, extra information to complement the 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 content of the video. So do check it out. And that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. This is Felipe for the Agroforce Academy. I'm signing out.